Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, we are so close to a new year. It's just crazy. This year flew by. Um, but this time of year, I always look back on what worked for us, what didn't, and I, I try to change things each year. So there's a lot of things that really did not work well for us this year. And there's a lot of things I've spent money on that I really do not have to spend money on. Um, and I really am all for a more self-sufficient lifestyle, a more simpler. This year is big time, a much more simpler lifestyle. That will be coming up in another video. That's going to be a much lengthier talk um, on some drastic changes we're doing in this house. Um, and I've been working on the past week. So the videos are going right now to about one or two a week um, just because I've been working through the bulk of that. I'm almost done. Um, but today's video, we're going to be talking about 40 items that I am not buying this year in 2024 because I don't need it, um, or it's a waste of money and I can do it much cheaper, or it's just things that aren't working for us anymore and that we just don't need or use, and it's going to save a ton of money, a ton of time, and free up a lot of space in my home. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one, the first thing that I am not buying this year in 2024 is kitchen gadgets. I'm not a gadget girl. I'm not. And this year, totally, um, if you watched my kitchen declutter with me video, like there's a lot of gadgets. I'm like, I don't use this. Um, there's things that I use regularly, like some gadgets, but not a ton. And most of the gadgets that you use for kitchen gadgets take a long time to clean. There's a lot of little parts. There's cracks and crevices and all these different things. Um, like garlic presses. I don't use melon ballers. There's a lot of different things that I don't use. I'm very simple in the kitchen. It is much quicker for me to grab a knife and a cutting board and chop my own garlic cloves than it is to sit there and put them through a presser and squeeze and peel the thing back and fit another one in. Like it is, I can do it so much quicker myself. So kitchen gadgets, I'm not buying this year. Number two, this is going to be a big one. This is going to be a hard one, but all this year I really, and I wrote them down because my brain would not be able to retain all this. Um, pre, prepackaged snacks. This has been a big one this year that I really felt like I want to move away from the prepackaged snacks. Okay. So like if you're new to this channel, I'm a mom of eight. I have eight kids from four years old up to 13. I've homeschooled for 10 years. We are on the go a lot. There's sports, there's gymnastics, there's dentist appointments. Most of the things we do like our doctors and dentists are over an hour away from us. We live up in the Rockies in Colorado. Um, I've homeschooled for 10 years, so just, you know, making three meals a day for your kids gets old and snacks. And then being on the go a lot, like um, convenient snacks are just super easy, right? Um, I'm also a firefighter in the area, so there's some days where like the kids are kind of just fending for themselves a little bit if I'm at training or I go to answer a call. All that to say, prepackaged snacks are super convenient, right? Like just buy a 40 pack of Nabisco brand snacks at Sam's Club. You got your graham crackers, you got your Chips Ahoy, you got all these things, right? Um, what I've realized this year is when I do buy it for convenience purposes, it's in the pantry and then my kids will be like, oh, can I grab a snack? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And that's what they're grabbing. So the one snack that's supposed to be on the go it's just super simple. They eat it the majority of the time at home because like I'm not making snacks every single day. I don't have that kind of time. Um, I, you know, it's what my time is more valuable sometimes than doing everything from scratch and doing everything myself. Um, my mindset is changing and shifting a little bit, but this year I also had a ton going on. I was in fire Academy. I was in hazmat courses, um, wildfire stuff and, where we did days in wildfire scenarios and with other districts and just all these extra things. So this year was a really busy year and like convenient snacks. That was the thing. Like I don't, I didn't have the time. And, and when I did have the free time, I'm like, <laughs> the last thing I want to do is like bake everything from scratch. Right. So convenient snacks, prepackaged stuff, not really good ingredients. I've really been more mindful with the ingredients on things. And a lot of those products have bioengineered ingredients in them. So I didn't even know that for some of them until I looked at the label and I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, and they're just like empty snacks. And what I think of empty snacks is like, it doesn't fill your kid up. Like 10 minutes later, they're still hungry, right? It has no nutritional value. So this year I am just making our snacks. I'm making them. And that'll be coming up in a video too because you're going to see what I got for Christmas. I was on the nice list apparently this year. Number three, mouthwash. I don't use it. I do not use it. I brush my teeth. I brush my tongue. I brush my mouth. I have a water pick. I have floss. 
um, coconut oil if you do oil pulling. I don't use mouthwash and I don't particularly care for the ingredients in it. Um, my husband, I think he uses it. I think he has like a bottle at his office. I saw, but we just don't use mouthwash. We just don't. So I am not buying mouthwash at all this year. Number four, shaving cream. I find the majority of the time we are out of shaving cream um, in my little supply in the bathroom. And I'm just using body wash out of the pump, uh, you know, when I need to shave um, or conditioner or shampoo, whatever, like anything really works. Um, so I'm like, and shaving cream is just like, I, there's so many simple recipes out there where you can just make your own with like two or three ingredients that you probably already have in your house anyway. So I'm just not buying shaving cream anymore. It takes up room on my shelf and we run out of it so much anyway that like, I just, I use other things anyway. So I am not buying shaving cream. Number five, soda. This is a big one. <laughs> um, so my husband pretty much this year gave up a lot of his Red Bulls and Monsters. He switched to like the sugar-free Monster. I still can't get him to kick that, but whatever. Whatever pays the bills, whatever keeps him going at work. Um, but sodas, he lost a lot of weight giving up soda. And that is a big thing. Like I am not a fan of soda whatsoever. I used to be a heavy soda drinker, you know, back in the day. Um, but I, I'm not like when we go out to eat at the restaurant and stuff, my kids get like a soda with their meal. Like I kind of cringe a little bit because I know it's not good for you. Every now and then I don't think it's going to kill you or be the death of you. I, it's, it's not, it's, you know, in moderation, if you go out to eat and you have a soda, it's not the end of the world, but I don't personally like to have it in my house because it goes like that. It's like, Oh, we have a nice cold soda. Who doesn't want that with dinner? Who doesn't want that in the middle, middle of the day? You know, um, my weakness is like when I'm eating Mexican food or pizza, like there's no sparkling bubbly water that I want with that. Like that's just such a flat, stale taste. I mean, I do drink bubbly waters, but like, it's, let's face it, it's not the best taste in the world, at least not to me. Um, but I, you know, like a, a nice, crisp, fresh soda, <laughs> ice cold sounds great. Um, but I found it's just more tempting when it's in the fridge and it's ice cold, like to go and grab that instead. Most of the time we almost always do water. There's really no extra drinks in our house. Um, besides like bubbly waters or, um, the LaCroix, um, sparkling waters. So definitely no soda with the exception, like if it's flu season and we're sick with the flu or something, I will buy a case of ginger ale. There's just something about having the flu and sipping on ginger ale and some saltine crackers that like there'll be exceptions, but that's pretty much the exception. Number six, it's kind of along the same thing, but the juice boxes and the Capri Suns. So we host a lot. We, our house, um, a lot of the time is like the hub for get togethers with my friend's kids or with our friends and hosting dinner and get togethers and stuff like that. Um, so we always have a drink fridge. We have a whole fridge in our garage dedicated to be in the drink fridge. And it's usually always stocked with, oh, I did forget Gatorades, but like Gatorades and Capri Suns and the Apple and Eve juice boxes or the Honest Kid organic ones. So it makes you feel a little bit better, right? Um, it, it, it's, you know, it's basically a fridge stocked with all that stuff is what we keep for like hosting or like the kids play outside the majority of the time. They're not always on, you know, tablets or electronics and things like that. So it's easy for them when they're playing outside. Hey, can I grab a drink from the drink fridge? You know, can I grab a juice box? Yeah, sure. Of course. Go ahead. Otherwise I have to get eight cups out of my cabinet and, and have them take a sip inside. You know, it's easy for them to run off in the yard with their drink. Right. But I just, I really feel when we have them in the house, they fly, they go like nothing. And I'm not really a fan of that. I, we really do a lot of water um, or milk on occasion, but I'm not doing the juice boxes and Capri Suns anymore this year. Number seven, dog toys. We have so many dog toys. Like I need to declutter my dog toys. Stuffed dog toys do not come in this house. Anyway, my labs will like tear it up within two minutes. It doesn't matter if you're bully make and you're all these companies insisting that no, we did bully make. And that's going to be another thing up here on what we're not doing this year. I wrote toys inside the house and they're like bones and, you know, chew type toys like that. But like the balls, frisbees, all that is outdoor toys anyway. Um, but dog toys, I'm not buying this year. Number eight, body wash. Um, so I'm not going to go too far into that. This will be for another video. Otherwise, I'm just going to take up too much time. But I'm really changing my mentality on a lot of things this year because I have been overwhelmed and stressed and had so much anxiety this year over what has crept into my home over time. I'm just going to say it, 2020, we all lived through it. We all have our own thoughts that how, how that has affected us. 
and buying more, stocking up more, making sure everything's always stocked up. That's great, you know, and we have a big house. We have the room for it. But my mental capacity cannot take any more over buying an interruption. And I don't know where I was going with that. But anyway, we are always stocked up. We always have multiples of whatever we buy. We shop at Sam's Club anyway. So like our body wash is a two pack. But like, I like to keep six on hand. I don't want to run out. We all have that mentality, right? A lot of us do. I'm nipping that in the butt. I can't take it anymore. That's me personally. Body wash. No, I am making soap this year. I have lye and a couple other ingredients of oils that I need in my Amazon cart. Um, you know, I like to stay stocked up on certain things, but it would take up less room if I just made my soaps like I used to. I used to have a business. It was like a boutique style business where I made goat's milk soaps and lotions and lip balms and bath bombs and body scrubs and all those fancy schmancy type things, soy candles. I did that all. I know how to do it and I'm getting back into it. It's simpler ingredients. It's cleaner ingredients. I know what's in it. Um, and space wise, it would not take up a lot of space. So I'm getting back into soaps and not buying big bulky containers of body wash. Number nine, eye makeup remover. So I get like the knockoff Neutrogena brand. I don't like the Neutrogena brand. I get the Equate one from Walmart um, for eye makeup remover and it never gets it fully off. Um, and years ago, I have I think I've told you I've gone from making stuff homemade all the time to then buying stuff. Same with cleaning products. We'll get there. Um, but there's like a two or three oils that you combine and you put it on your face and you put it on your eyes and then you get like a hot, wet washcloth, um, and you put it on your face for like 20 seconds and it literally wipes everything off in one swipe. You don't have to sit there scrubbing with a cotton ball all over your eyes and trying to smear, you know, mascara down your face. Like I've went through so many of those products and they never work fully. Like the next day you're still wiping it off in the morning, washing your face. So I'm going back to just making my own makeup remover. It worked great. I just need to get a container for it. So it has a dedicated container. So no makeup removing products this year. Number 10, parchment paper. I am switching to silicone mats. It's just less wasteful. I hate putting parchment paper on cookie trays and putting it in the oven for 10 to 30 minutes and then throwing it out. Um, I just, and it takes up room in the drawer. We buy the big two packs from Sam's Club in bulk because why not? But it's just something that we don't really need to buy. And I'm just going to use the silicone baking mats if I can find one large enough for my cookie tray because I think it's like the biggest size cookie tray they make. Um, family of time. But um, I, I do plan on switching to silicone baking mats and just having something reusable. Number 11, breads. I know. I have a, I have a mill. I make I make my own breads. I know how to make Hamburg buns. I know how to make it, you know, Italian bread, French bread, sub rolls, you name it. I can make it bagels. Um, this, this year has really been a busy year. Like I said, I tried cramming in tons of things that I don't normally do into my time. So a lot of this year was really convenient. What's just quick, what's fast, what's convenient, what's keeping my family fed. Um, but I'm capable of making bread. So there's going to be some freezer days coming up. Yes, I know. I'm not always a freezer person. I go through my phases. Um, but this year, like I need to ensure it because it's super easy at 830 at night after training to go to Safeway and be like, uh, I really don't want to go home and make sandwich bread at nine o'clock at night. Um, so I'm just going to buy a couple loaves and then like bagels, you know, as your standard order. Oh, buy some already made bagels, throw them in the freezer. It's super convenient, but I'm just going to say, my bagels are 5 million times better than Azure standards, and I'm not trying to knock them. I've shopped with them since 2017, and it's not even their bagels. It's like Avarado or whatever, but my bagels are way better. It's like almost disappointing to eat those, but it's convenient. You have them in the freezer. Somebody else made them. You just pull them out when you need them, but what I'm going to be doing is a bunch of batch baking days and fill in my freezer with breads, all those things, Hamburg buns everything ready to go. And I'm really working on decluttering and working through my freezers right now to have that space to be able to do a freezer prep day with you guys. Number 12, cleaning products. I think I maybe already touched on this. Did I say it? No, I was talking about soap. Okay. So cleaning products, I went through my phases of making my own cleaning products, buying them. I did the method products for a long time. My whole cleaning closet, my entry closet is my cleaning closet. And it's like shelves of all these cleaners, like tons of them, like five of each. Okay. And then I went through the Azure standard cleaners where I bought the big jugs and then, you know, you get plastic 
bottles and you refill with, you know, the concentrate or the, just the big refill jugs. And the amount of space that it takes up is ridiculous, let alone the amount of money. I'm not complaining about their cleaners. I do like them, but I can make my own cleaners and that is what I'm doing. So I am not, I, well, that's another one, but I'll jump the gun. Um, I'm going to get the glass spray bottles um, that I used to get and keep you know, one window one, a bathroom one, all purpose, yada, yada, um, and just make my own cleaners. There might be the exception, though, of granite. Like my granite, if you use other cleaners besides a specific granite cleaner, it looks really dingy and dull. Um, and we paid a lot of money for our granite. It's in our laundry room. It's in our kitchen. We have a lot of counter space. So it's a lot of granite. And it's like, I like it to be shiny like it's supposed to be. Um, same with our travertine floors. Using a specific stone cleaner is really important. I have ruined and etched our travertine tile. Using different cleaners on the floor. Definitely not supposed to use citrus on travertine. There's like some serious etch marks in some areas. Um, but I... I'm going to see if my cleaner works on the granite because I haven't done it in a long time. I haven't done my cleaner since our since before we bought this house and I didn't have granite in there, but I just feel like using Method or Azure on our granite, it just leaves it looking dull and dingy because it's not a specific stone cleaner. So possibly with the exception of the stone cleaners, but other than that, I make my own cleaning products this year. It'll save time and it'll save a space ton of space and I'll have my entry closet back for another purpose. Number 13, buying coffee out. I am so not big on this anymore. And you know what? It's a tip thing. I'm sick of the tip thing. I, and I'm so, I have no filter. I complain to these people all the time who like are like, you know, leave a tip or whatever. Like, no. Um, I, we have an espresso machine. That was our Christmas gift to our, to ourselves three years ago. It's a really legit espresso machine. And I like our coffee better than any drive through coffee out there. I like making it and I make it, I'll fill up a Yeti cup and I'll make my iced latte on the road. Um, now hot coffee, I don't usually get to drink hot coffee because like, hello, eight kids. Um, it's like ice cold by the time I get to it anyway, which is how I really turn myself off of hot coffee because that's all I would drink and really turn myself on to iced coffee, like iced lattes. Um, however, it's really tempting when we're on the go and we're doing dentist appointments and all these things down the hill to like want to get a hot coffee. So from time to time I'll treat myself, but I'm like so over the tip thing and it's never good enough. Like nobody knows how to make coffee anymore, but the tip thing, I'm like, you're asking for a tip before I receive my service. Like if you go to a restaurant, you're not going to tip your waitress before they even get you your drinks, right? Because like, what are you tipping for? Like you don't even know what kind of service you're going to get. They could be really lousy. Um, same with, you know, drive through coffee. I don't know how many times like I've left a $2 tip or something and then they screw my drink up. It's not even the right drink and it, it, the service is horrible or the wait is like forever. So I'm just avoiding those all together. And I told them too, I'm like, what am I tipping for? All you did was like ring me up and you're asking for my debit card. Like I haven't even received service. Why are you asking for a tip before you even receive service? I'm so over this. Like people just don't know how to work anymore. Like they want more. They want more. Like their pay isn't enough. I'm going to get off my coffee buying rant. Okay. <laughs> Number 13, plastic Tupperwares and dishes. So in a previous kitchen declutter with me video that I did, I got rid of all my kids' plastic wear. Does that mean there's broken dishes from time to time? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Especially this past week. I think there's like three things that have broke. <laughs> but my light died. Anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> um, the plastic stuff. I'm really not a fan of like heating food up in the microwave with plastic. Um, the Tupperwares, I really made an investment with food prep containers. We hardly ever have leftovers. I make just enough for everybody. Um, but you know, if we do have leftovers or something, we could just pop it in a glass Tupperware. So I really invested recently in glass Tupperwares. I think that was in my Sam's club haul that you guys saw too. Um, like the three compartment ones for like food prep and stuff like that. Lunches, whatever. So we have made the switch from plastic Tupperware. They just get so stained up. The quality, it just doesn't hold up. And it's like, it's worth the investment to have something you can reuse over and over again. And like, it looks clean all the time um, and is not all tore up. <laughs> Number 15, hand soap pumps. Okay. So I've always done hand soap pumps the same way for ages since like 2016. Okay. Um, I'm a member of doTERRA. I've been for eight, for, since like 2016, 2017, back when I did my candle and stuff business. 
Um, I have my LRP. So like every month you have to buy something. Um, in one month I bought a bunch of their hand soap, the foaming hand soap pumps, because like, I feel like the ones I get on Amazon, they always break. They don't work good. They've held up for a long time. And if they get really bad, I'll just replace them. But really I haven't had to. I just wash them really good. They hold up well. Um, I always fill them up with water. You can use distilled water, sink water. We fly through hand soap like no one's business. So I just use regular sink water and I add two tablespoons of like Dr. Bronner's Castile liquid soap and shake it up. And that's our, our hand soap. This December during all the hosting and get togethers and pie night and having people over and family, um, I bought like the fancy Mrs. Myers pine scented ones to have nice ones throughout the house. And just to get through the Christmas season for the month of December, maybe since actually since Thanksgiving, um, we've went through like eight or nine of those soap pumps, maybe even more, maybe more like maybe close to 12. We went through a lot of them and they're not cheap. They're ridiculous. But with a large household in general, the amount of money I spent just for that, just to have something a little nicer for guests. Oh my gosh. No. So I'm like, I'm not, I don't care who you are. No, you're using the same soap that we use year round. Um, no, nothing fancy. I'll throw some essential oils in it for the smell, but it, literally I'm not doing that again. I will not do that. So I am not buying hand soap pumps. Number 16, pre-cut fruit. I don't know how many times I walk into Safeway and I'm like, oh, that looks really good. It's already done for me. I don't have to do it. And you spend like for such a small amount of fruit, you spend like three times the cost of just buying those fruits and cutting them yourself. Um, so I've really gotten out of that mentality, especially with my plate a lot, you know, less on my plate right now. It's easier to just do these things myself, but we did do that a lot this year is just buying the pre-cut stuff. And I'm like the amount of money it costs for like a fraction of what you could actually buy if you did it yourself. I just won't buy pre-cut fruits again. Number 17, canned beans. So back when I did my pantry tour video, I know cringe. It was like the beginning of my videos. <laughs> that was the beginning of my videos. Don't judge. Um, but somebody, somebody in the comments, there's always somebody. There's always, right? <laughs> I knew this going into YouTube. Um, but they're like, well, why don't you just pressure can your own beans? Because I could buy canned beans for less than a buck a can at the store and it takes hours to pressure can. <laughs> like, that's why um, I'm assuming this person's never had children or their kids are out of the house and they forgot what it's like to have kids. But having eight kids, having a homeschool, being a firefighter and doing all these other things to and, to and fro all the time with appointments and things. Sometimes the last thing I want to do in my free time is bust out a pressure canner and pressure can. As much as I love to, I know the life skill. I know how to do it if I need to. But sometimes there are seasons in life where, like, you want to relax and breathe a little bit. You don't want, you don't have to do everything from scratch all the time. I am not one of those people, like, you know, trying to live a reenactment of, like, the 1940s or whenever where everyone did everything themselves. Like, I love that lifestyle. I love the self-sufficiency. But my YouTube channel, my life is not a reenactment of those time eras. Like I, I just, it's not okay. I do what I can. I do it when I can and when I have the time, but I don't mind spending, you know, five, 10 bucks at the store for a month's worth of canned beans that are already canned and done. Um, however, this year, now that I have my plate less than, you know, a lot less on my plate, I do plan on pressure canning my own beans because I can buy them cheaper in bulk. It is cheaper to just do it yourself sometimes um, if you have the time. So I'm just going to do a, a bunch of big batches of some dry beans coming up here. I'm going to get on my Azure Standard order. And there's one exception, though. I will continue to buy the Bush's um, grill, grilling beans, the bourbon ones, because when I make a sweet and smoky homemade chili, that's one of my secret ingredients in it. And the, the flavor is phenomenal. You can't like pressure can that yourself and get that same exact flavor. I love the flavor of it. So I will continue to buy those, but like black beans and great Northern beans and pinto beans, all those I do plan on buying them, you know, in bulk dry and pressure canning them myself.
making disposable cupcake liners. Um, I'm switching to silicone. I just, I'm looking at space and, and I have a lot of cabinet space. I have a lot of drawers, but there's so much space that could be freed up. And I, I buy in bulk because like we, we're a family of 10. So I have been buying the ones from Azure Standard. I think I bought like 25 packs of 60 in bulk it does save money if you buy more in bulk it does save money but it's like how much space is this actually taken up in your house and how much do you have to manage and they're little individual containers like 25 ones so like the storage for that's just crazy and I'm like you know what I'm gonna buy the amount of silicone liners that I would need for my big big tray of I don't know 30 or 40 cupcakes how, or muffins however much it holds and I'm just gonna buy what I need and I think I'm going to make the switch to silicone. Teen scent boosters. I'm not big on scent boosters. Um, we have got them, but I don't like a lot of scents. Um, and minus the chemicals. We won't even go into the chemicals in those. Um, I am really trying to be more mindful and slowly making changes as I feel the need to. And, you know, we can only do so much at one time. You can't just, like, wake up the next morning and be this totally different person. Like, incrementally I'm making changes in the right direction. So scent boosters, sometimes like your clothes just need an extra pick me up. And yes, I use vinegar for fabric softener. Um, but that doesn't always cut every single odor out. Um, but I am not buying the scent boosters anymore. It's just a waste of space. It's a waste of space in my cabinet above my washer. I have drawer system. I'll show you in an upcoming video. Um, but I'm just not buying them anymore. I don't like multiple scents and my perfume that I use. Like I don't like smelling like scent boosters plus my perfume plus whatever my hair smells like. Like that's just too much. That'll give me a headache and it's just really bad chemicals. So scent boosters we are not spending the money on this year. Number 20, candles. I still buy candles. You guys, I have a candle in my bathroom. I bought at Hobby Lobby. My husband's like, you have probably 200 candles that you made in the garage. Um, back when I did like my farmer's markets and my, my, or not farmer's markets, but regular markets where you can, you know, buy things. Uh, we did them up here in town. Um, I do have a lot of candles, but however, I don't like every single cent. I would make like four to 500 candles at a time myself. Hence why I don't do that anymore. Um, it was large scale. I had like a website and everything. Um, but I had like cents for everybody. There were cents that I, bought for, you know, that other people would like that I absolutely hate. So there's a lot of candles that I have that I need to go through, but some scents at the store is just tempting. Um, but candles I'm not buying, I'm using up what I have and that's it. Mine are way cleaner anyway than what's at the store more than likely. Um, cause I was really picky on my fragrances where I got my fragrances from and it's soy wax. Number 21, body scrubs and bath bombs. Um, we don't take baths here often, because our for three quarters of the year our well is dry and my husband tanks water um and with 10 people like you know we just do quick showers and stuff the kids are getting older where they need to shower more frequently but baths is like not something we do often um so we don't really hardly use bath bombs but like body scrubs i'm not buying them anymore i used to make them i just really need to find the time maybe once every couple months and and just make a couple and stock up on those like have those on hand ready to go if we need to use them so okay so like we've been doing the jugs of the Tide Pods or the big Azure Standard dry bags of the Country Save um I think that's what it's called but I really am kind of back on like I just want to make my laundry soap again myself I have all the ingredients already above my utility sink um in the cabinet you know just in case um, I have the, you know, the bars of soap and all that stuff to um, make everything. So I'm like, why not just make it and start using those products up? So I'm going back to making our own laundry soap. Number 23, plastic spray bottles. So the cleaning bottles, you know, buying the big cleaners from Azure Standard, the big gallon sized jugs of the cleaner refill. And then, you know, like the bottles break and they disappear and, you know, someone threw it out because it was empty. Um, I just am not doing the plastic bottles anymore. So like I said, I'm going to be making my own cleaning products. So I'm going to be buying their my Amazon cart too. I haven't told my husband, but I need to buy them. Um, they're my Amazon cart to just go ahead and make my own cleaners and have glass bottles on hand. I feel those work much better and hold up much better. And I feel better with like using rubbing alcohol and essential oils 
not having it in a plastic container, eating away at the plastic, and then cleaning your house with 24 starter plants. I know. <laughs> I said that last year. I'm like, I'm not buying starter plants. And I, hold on. Sorry about that. I had, <laughs> it's the fire station thing at six o'clock every day it goes off. And, um, yeah, it's a test page. Anyway, sorry about that. My phone and my radio is going off. Um, so anyway, starter plants. I really am, when I have something in my mind, like I am going to do this, I'm going to do it. I don't care. I don't care if I fail a hundred times at it. I'm going to continue to do it if it's something I really want to do. I just want to garden. You cannot garden here normally. You have to have a greenhouse. And even people that I know, I know three people this year who had greenhouses and they didn't do that great. Um, but the wildlife here, we have every wildlife you can imagine here and just our yard, our terrain money to make raised beds only to have all the wild animals eat it. I can't buy flowers, you guys. I spent hundreds, I know, hundreds of dollars on like Home Depot flowers. I'd go there and I'm like, oh, these are gorgeous and put them in the flower pot. And the next day the chipmunks have eaten every single flower off the stems. You can't do it here. I don't care who you are. So many people are like, yes, you can. And it's like, if you have tens of thousands of dollars to make tears throughout your yard and excavate, like, of course you can. We don't have that right now. And the wildlife would still get to it. Like, it, it's just crazy. We need to do a greenhouse. We were hoping that was going to be on our summer list this past year, but it wasn't. We just, my husband excavated roads instead in our yard to kind of get some flat areas and to make a road for a UTV to go up because our yard's so sloped and it's all boulders and it's all brush. It's all rock. Um, so starter plants, I'm just not doing it this year. I have seeds. I can, I can grow my own starter plants, but I did. I saw them already established and wanted to get them and spend a ton of money and got nothing from the plants. And if you go back to my Azure standard haul videos, you saw how many starter plants I got. And I'm sure you could do the math on how much that costs to get no harvest from it. So my husband is like, when we do a greenhouse, then you can do this. So I, I can do some from seed. We have like veg trugs, you know, on our decks and the green stock planters and I'll do those, but the chipmunks still go on the deck and eat off of that. Um, so until we have a greenhouse, I'm just, I'm not uh, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds for nothing. I could have bought the produce in bulk and had three years worth of canned produce for the cost of what I spent trying to trying to garden this year. Number 25, impulse Amazon purchases. I know we're all guilty of this, right? It's like you see this, you're on here to buy one thing and then you're like, oh, but that's really cool. We could totally use that here. Or like you see that home decor and it's like, oh, I really like that a lot. They always recommend like things, you know, from your previous searches and it's like, oh, you know, I'm not doing impulse purchases this year. I'm just not Number 26, Christmas decor. So I, as I have gotten older, I like less. <laughs> I'm 35 years old. Have I hit this point already? Um, I'm like, I'm downsizing. I don't like a cluttered feel in rooms. That's really big for me right now. Like I'm just overwhelmed. I just want to simplify. I'm not saying full blown minimist, minimalist, but I really want to significantly simplify. And I've been working on that for like the past week. Um, but Christmas decor, I, I really don't like a ton of it. I don't want it to feel busy and crowded to where I cannot wait to take Christmas down because I've had enough. Um, so I'm really simplifying that and I'm just, I'm not buying seasonal. I'm just going to say seasonal, seasonal decor. I'm not big on decorating except for fall and Christmas, even Easter. Like I'm just not big on decorating for holidays like that. Like I'll have a little something here and a little something there, little things like that. But I'm not big on like going all out and decorating my whole house other than things or fall decorations and Christmas. Number 27. This is one of my battles and we'll talk about it in another video. But I am not buying long term food at all. I'm not. I'm not doing it. I have long term food. I'm not buying another thing of long-term food. I'm not going to go into it in this video. I'm just not doing it. I'm not doing it. So no long-term food this year. Number 28, fast food. Um, fast food for us is Chick-fil-A <laughs> when we're down in Loveland or Fort Collins or somewhere away from where we are because we don't have Chick-fil-A here. We have McDonald's, which 
I don't eat. I, my kids maybe eat it once a year. And that's like if we're on the road, if we're traveling in the fifth wheel, and that's like the only thing in 30 miles from now and they're all crying, they're hungry. Um, I'm not big on fast food, but Chick-fil-A is a lifesaver sometimes because sometimes we have like all eight kids have a dentist appointment down the hill and we're down there for hours and it's super simple to do. Like I think there's situations that call for that, but a lot of the time like we don't have to. We could wait till we get home, um, but sometimes it just sounds really good. But the amount of money just for eight of my kids, because the majority of my kids eat off the adult menu now, just for my eight kids, not me and my husband, is 90 something dollars, almost $100 at Chick-fil-A. That adds up a lot. That adds up real quick. And it's just not justifiable. I, like we could go to a steakhouse and dine in and not pay that much more. Um, yeah, for Chick-fil-A. So fast food is like a no-no this year. 29, tissues. Um, I find that we have had tissues in our mechanical room since 2020. And they haven't been used. <laughs> they just aren't. Like, am I, are we the only ones? But like, we just grab toilet paper if there's paper towels. I'm not big on the paper towels. And we do have like regular cleaning rags. But we do have a puppy that occasionally will have an accident. And I'm not using reusable cloths on that. Um, or, you know, if they accidentally have an accident or a kid throws up, I'm not using. I'm The stink in that just. Days. I don't care what laundry detergent you use, Tide, all the chemical stuff. It does not always get that, that funk out. So uh, we're still in a season of life with little kids and animals where like there's cat throw up or something um, where we're using paper towels. And I still always, when I clean under the toilet seat, I can't use a rag. I just can't use a rag that's rewashable. Everything else I can, but I always use a paper towel underneath. It just grosses me out, the thought of that. Um, but anyway, on the talk of tissues, like we just grab a paper towel or toilet paper if we need to blow our nose. We hardly ever have a box of tissues. And yeah, that is just so tissues. We are not buying tissues. Number 30, plastic wrap in Ziploc bags. That's kind of crazy because I've bought those for ages. Like, and then plastic wrap, I don't even use. I hate it. It never works. Like, I use foil for everything. That's what I used before I got my glass Tupperwares. Um, we're not even doing that anymore. But the plastic bags, I have a whole dedicated drawer in my kitchen of just plastic bags. Now, with the exception, I do have my bread bags because I do make, you know, homemade sandwich bread and stuff like that. And th there's bread bags that I need a certain size to close up my bread. And I do have a bread box, but you still have to put it in a bag or else it still gets stale because there's still air that can get through the cracks, right? It's not like completely airtight. Um, but I, I, I will buy my bread bags, but that's it. Um, everything else, like there's no more Ziploc bags. There's, I feel like we never use them and the things we're using them for are just not like if I chop half an onion and put it back in the fridge, what do you do? You wrap it in foil or you throw it in the Ziploc bag and put it in your, your fridge. Um, and I just realized how little we actually use them. Um, and I, even like for sandwiches and stuff like that, like I bought the plastic, um, compartment food prep containers because you can, you can pop a sandwich in there, um, along with two additional sides. So I'm really just trying to cut down on the waste and the plastic. Number 31, homeschool activities and manipulatives. I decluttered my homeschool room. It's still a process. I'm noticing I have to go through phases because I'll feel good about decluttering. Not going to go too far into this because that's another video, but I'll feel good about it. And then like a week later, I can go through again and be like, oh, I should, you know, this we really don't need. Um, so every time I do like my little cycles of it, I'm seeing other things that we could easily donate. Um, but there's a lot of manipulatives we just don't use. And it's nice to have. It's like, yeah, I have eight kids to homeschool, but I actually don't use them. Or like certain um, learning games and stuff like that. Like, I have just enough time to get through our core subjects in a day. Um, I don't have the free time to do these little games and things that go with things that are optional. So I'm really cutting down on the excess homeschool inventory. Number 32, warranties. Not doing them. I It's always some third party type stuff. Like when you buy a vacuum cleaner or this and that. And you can get this warranty for two years. But then you bring it to the store and they're like, well, no, you have to ship it to the company directly. 
for like some Sam's Club stuff. It's third party stuff and they don't tell you that. And it's like, who has time to find a box big enough to fit my vacuum to ship it to a third party? Like nobody has that kind of time these days, right? Um, so warranties, we don't use them. If, if, it's a per, if it's a product we absolutely love and it's damaged or whatever, we will rebuy it. And I know not everybody has that, but it's like where your time is money it, it kind of thing. Like our time is far more valuable um, to just rebuy a vacuum if we absolutely have to. And our vacuums generally last us a year anyway before we have to rebuy. They are used multiple times a day. Day three, alcohol. So once again, we have the drink fridge and when we host, we like our company feeling, you know, welcome and have a variety of things from them to choose from. But like beers, you know, I used to drink beer. I used to love beer um, with wings, with pizza or like whiskey or bourbon. Um, so, you know, like from time to time, not like all the time. Okay. Um, but I've noticed like not everyone goes for alcohol, you know, that does come over and it was just taking up space in our fridge. And, you know, occasionally, like if we go out for Mexican, I love a margarita, I will drink a margarita. Um, but very rarely, like maybe once every couple months we have an alcoholic drink. So just to have, that in our house taking up space. It's just not working anymore. So I'm not buying alcohol with the exception of bourbon. I buy Buffalo Trace because I use that in my rib marinades. I use that in a couple other marinades, um, bourbon balls. There's, I do cooking with that. Um, wine, when I make my homemade stuffing, I use white wine. When uh, uh, So there's like certain wines, very rarely, but occasionally when I make something um, I use or my homemade vanilla extract, I use Jim Beam and um, I will buy that, obviously, my bourbon for my vanilla extract that I make. But other than that, like excess alcohol to drink, we're not buying it um, at all. We're very, very rare occasional drinkers like that. We hardly ever have a drink. Number 34, gift bags. I just decluttered my gift wrap closet. I have a closet. That's a gift wrap closet. I know. It's crazy, right? Um <laughs> I have a gift wrap closet in my bedroom. That's what my closet off to the side is. And it's organized, but there's so much stuff. Like your house can look clean and it can be organized, but when you actually start pulling stuff out, it's absolutely incredible how much you have. And it looks nice and neat and everything has a home, but it's the quantity. How much do you actually need? How much does a person need? In gift bags, like you know, I feel people very rarely do like birthday parties anymore or get togethers or anything like that. Like, I don't know they, like a lot of people just don't socialize, you know, like they used to. Um, but if we go to a birthday, like you use wrapping paper, like we never used gift bags and I have all these gift bags. I have like at least a hundred gift bags and I'm like, this is so stupid. <laughs> like we don't use gift bags. So I will not buy another gift bag this year. Number 35, subscriptions. Um, we did the auto ship with Chewy, which really isn't a subscription. It kind of is. You save a little bit, little bit, like a couple bucks. It's it's like to us, it's whatever. You know, we don't we don't need to do it. It's convenient, but auto ship, if you forget to like cancel your order or push it off to a later date, then you get all this stuff automatically ship to your house that you might not need um, and have to find the space for if you're not ready for it yet. Um, Bully Make, we did that for a couple years with the dog treats and the dog toys, hence why we have two massive containers of dog toys. Um, and it's just kind of one of those things where like you forget to cancel these things and they automatically renew your membership. Um, and this year I canceled it and they like emailed me three times like, oh, are you sure? And we can do this. Like they didn't even cancel it when I asked them to cancel it. They tried like talking me into doing this or shipping, you know, four times a year seasonally. And like they did not want to lose me. And I'm just like, no, like cut it off. I literally sent three or four emails back and forth like, cancel this, please cancel it. And now I get all the emails, even though I'm unsubscribed and all the text messages and trying to get back on with them. But, um, yeah, the subscriptions we're not doing, and we don't do like TV subscriptions either. We have Amazon prime. That's about it. We have not had cable since 2009, the first year we were married in 2000 on Amazon prime. There's PBS kids and all these different subscriptions. I just feel with subscriptions. It's very, hard to remember to cancel things. Like we just had our Mel Science kits that we get for our kids. 
come out. It was like $600 um, because we have one for the younger kids and then we had a subscription for the older kids. We tried it for the first time last Christmas. That was like one of their Christmas presents, um, a yearly subscription for that. And what do you know? My husband's like, what is this $600 charge? I'm like, I have no clue. And then I'm like, oh, it's a subscription. So um, yeah, subscriptions. No, no, we're good. 36, buying duplicates. So I'm a very visual person. Like I have to see things because if it's like, you know, if I have too much stuff and stuff's behind that stuff, like I don't see that. I don't go, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like I'm visual. I have to see what we have to know what we have. Um, so buying duplicates of things, I'm really trying to cut down on this year because I am trying to donate a lot of our duplicates that we do have currently just because we don't need them. Um, you know, I always have that mentality, like it'd be nice to have a backup this, a backup that. I think the only thing I have a backup of is one manual can opener. We use the manual ones just because like if it breaks, I want to be able to finish opening something. So I do have one backup um, manual can opener. But other than that, I... The duplicates, I really need to cut down on this year. Number 37, seasonal decor. So I actually think I touched on this with the Christmas decor, just seasonal decor in general. Um, the welcome mats, all the things. I've, I'm really just trying to cut down on the inventory that we have because I'm really just liking the simplicity, a little touch here and there. Other than Christmas, I still go all out for Christmas, but even that I'm minimizing this year and we will be decluttering this weekend when we take Christmas down. Number 38, greeting cards. So I used to do this with my girls. Never did this with my boys, so I kind of have the mom guilt for it. But like I'd write something personal in their card every year. My boys don't have any of this. But my three girls, like for birthdays or Christmas or Easter, you know, do all the cards. Like we don't save cards. I used to save theirs, but I'm like, I never did this with any of our boys because it's like five bucks a card. And it's like, you know, by the time they move it out of the house, like who's going to want a stack of all their cards from their childhood to take with them? Like, what are they going to do? Display it in their house. And it's nice to look back on those things. Sometimes I understand, but with eight kids, the amount of space that takes up, that adds up over time. So seasonal, you know, I'll send Christmas cards out to family. But other than that, I don't, I'm not doing Shutterfly again. I did Shutterfly this year and it was like $150 for cards that arrived December 22nd. So they all get delivered after Christmas anyway. And I ordered them the beginning of December. Um, but I'm like, most people probably just throw this out anyway and don't keep it. And like the amount of money you're putting into it. So Christmas cards I'll send out. But like the thank you cards and stuff like that. I'm just not bombarding people with cards in general this year or birthday cards. B9, exercise equipment. If you've watched my videos long enough, you know we have an elliptical machine in our bedroom and a weight bench. And the weight bench came during Fire Academy because I'm like, I'm I'm running live hose. Like that's a lot of weight. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of weight. Like I had this intention of lifting weights and told my husband, I am, I just need it here. I, I don't have time to go to the gym. Um, but truth be told, I have eight kids in the house. They don't go off to school. They're home with me all day, every single day. So coming up here, to use workout equipment and gym equipment, there's knocks on the door. Mom, mom, so-and-so did this. Can we have this? Can we have that? There, There's going to be interruptions. And I feel like when you're really trying to dedicate time to something, there's going to be even more interruptions. And realistically, I'm just too distracted having workout equipment in the house. My mind's going like I should be doing this or, oh, the dishwasher stopped or, oh, the laundry stopped. If I pull the clothes out now out of the dryer, I don't have to iron. Um, you know, it's very distracting to do that. And I feel like that needs to be a dedicated time outside of the home. So we might put it in storage because we do plan on doing an addition on our house, hopefully within the next year or two, um, where we can have a workout room that's not in our bedroom because it's so peaceful coming into a nice clean room at the end of the day, but coming into a nice clean room with gym equipment in the middle of your room, quite literally is not relaxing and unwinding. It's stressful. And I feel like every time you see that equipment just sitting there with dust or clothes on hangers, hanging on the, the weight bar, it's kind of just like, how many times have you used me? You know, um, I'm really starting to get in that mindset, especially like clothes that don't fit you anymore. Um, just having things that make you feel bad in general and having the constant reminder at the end of the day, like, you know, it's midnight, you're going to bed, but did you use me today? No, I didn't. 
Um, so, so just having that in your room is not very relaxing. I do like the elliptical in here, but even still, like this is just not the season for it. And it's really hard having it in your bedroom where you're supposed to unwind at the end of the day. So I got permission um, from one of the fire departments in the area that has gym equipment to just use their gym equipment when I feel like it. Even if it's in the middle of the night, I have the codes. I can go in there anytime and I can use the machines that they have at the fire department. Last but not least, number 40, gifts with purchase. Um, so I told you I buy my makeup probably three times a year um, from Macy's. I've always used Lancome. That's the only type of makeup that does not make me break out. Um, and I actually like it a lot. I've bought it for over a decade. Um, so like every couple months, usually when I have to buy rebuy my makeup, they have a gift with purchase. So you get this $200 value of, um, you know, anti-aging products and eye cream and moisturizer and makeup remover and perfume, all these different samples and even full size things, you know, this value of $200, um, with your purchase. And it's like, well, if I'm buying this anyway, why not get $200 worth of extra stuff? Can I tell you something? I'm going to share this with you right? Cute little samples and makeup samples, eyeliner, um, eyeshadow, lipsticks. Okay. This isn't all of it. This is like a quarter of it. I'm not a big makeup person and I'm not a big like anti-aging person with the creams and stuff because they don't work. They, do, they make you feel better. They make you feel like they work, but they don't work. They don't work at all. Okay. They don't. Um, I have so many of these things like Lancome body lotions and toners, rehydrating toners. Some are even bigger full-size products and the night creams and the anti-aging um, Lift Multi-Action Ultra and the Genifique or whatever, <laughs> like serums. I like tons of these guys. I have more. And some I threw out was the expired stuff. Gifts with purchase. If you wouldn't go in that store and buy this item on any given day for any reason, you don't need it. If you wouldn't go in there just to buy this, you don't need it. It's fun to get free stuff because you think you're like really getting a bargain when you're buying something that is ridiculously expensive. It's expensive. That's why I buy my makeup three times a year. But when you're going in there buying stuff, it, it makes you feel better about your purchase when like you're getting all these things for free, right? So I don't do that anymore. I actually intentionally buy it when they don't have a gift with purchase going on because they have these cute little display cases on the counter of like all these products all lit up under a light that looks so nice. And, and you know, it's free. Why not? Right? I don't use it. I don't. So, and I don't really want to burden somebody else with all this stuff because chances are it's probably going to sit in their drawer and collect dust and they're not going to use it either. Um, so, but some of the things like, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to give away or ask somebody and if not, it's okay to just toss it. I mean, like seriously, I'm not going to hunt people down to take my freebies, um, for them to use. I'm just not going to do it. So, but anyway, gifts with purchase. It sounds tempting. It sounds like you're really getting a steal of a deal. Um, you're not, you're not, this is what happens. This is gift with purchase. Um, you're probably not going to use it. And like all those little free, cute cosmetic bags with patterns. I don't use those either. And I have probably like 20 of those that I have collected over the years that I just got rid of. I donated them. They're at Goodwill. That's somebody else's problem. And somebody else is probably going to go through there and, and find them and buy them and have the same dilemma I have. <laughs> so anyway, so those are the 40 things that I am not buying this year that I think are going to definitely save a ton of money, um, save time, and free up a lot of space in my home. I really am working on significantly simplifying my home. I'm just really too overwhelmed, and um, it, things are starting to get a little cluttered. So having all the extras, I'm really trying to change my mentality on that. It's just not really healthy. Um, and I've noticed that and I'm really trying to work with myself on decluttering these things and letting go. And each day it gets easier and easier to just grab stuff and throw it in the donate box. So anyway, um, what are some things that you guys are looking to change this year? What worked for you? What didn't? Is it, you know, finances that you're trying to change? Um, maybe use more coupons, 
Are you trying to make more foods and be more self-sufficient at home and eat out less? The costs are crazy, guys. Oh, my gosh. That's definitely one thing we are definitely doing. Um, can we do it? Yes, but it's ridiculous, the cost of going out to eat. So that's like a very rare thing. But we are really trying to cut back on a lot of things. And this year really highlighted a lot of things that I wanted to change. And I'm looking forward to these changes. Anyway, I will see you guys on the next video. Take care and God bless.